When the dinosaurs died out, so did most life over 10 kilograms. And when the climate catastrophes that occurred finally ceased, the world began to slowly recover. But some dinosaurs survived, what we call birds, and it didn't take long for some of those birds to retake the dinosaur's mantle. Gastornis stands two meters tall and weighs over 150 kilograms, one of the largest land animals 50 million years ago. They live in tropical forests on what is now Europe, but will spread as far as North America and China. Heavily muscled and armed with a thick, crushing beak, Gastornis may seem like a qualifier for apex predator, but they are actually herbivores. Their wide feet lack sharp talons, and their huge beaks aren't hooked like birds of prey. Instead, they use their tremendous bite force to crack open hard seeds and nuts, and are most closely related to ducks. To find the food they need, they have wide territories. One belongs to a female, who is making her daily trip in the early morning light. She must travel far and wide in order to get to all the different trees and plants that have what she needs. Some of the nuts are so hard that only her kind can break them open, and as she wanders her forest home, she will deposit many of the seeds that don't digest in her dung, helping to spread seeds from many different plants all over the forest far from their home tree. She helps spread many different species of plant, much like a modern cassowary. Some of these seeds wouldn't have been able to germinate for years without her intervention. As she cracks open a particularly hard-to-eat morsel, she hears something walking through the trees behind her. Taking a curious look, she sees a male Gastornis. Normally these giant birds are solitary, but she knows this individual to a degree. It is the mating season, and males will walk kilometers to find a mate, but females only have a short time when they are receptive. This male has been following her for a little over a day, keeping his distance, hoping she will be interested, but so far she has for the most part ignored him. So he follows her, waiting for her to acknowledge him, and to fight off any males that may turn up. The female continues to feed. Though she is a nut-cracking specialist, Gastornis do go for soft fruits. But one thing they love above all else is honey. Usually, bees make their nests out of reach of the two-meter-tall birds, but Gastornis can jump quite high, and as the female hears louder and louder buzzing, her keen eye soon spies a bee's nest. The swarming insects have made their nest along the branch of a tree, just within her jumping range. But as much as Gastornis love honey, they hate getting stung. Despite their covering of feathers, these provide little in the way of defense, and she has plenty of featherless areas, such as her legs. As she stood directly under the hive, the bees began to get visibly more agitated, she turned and saw the male Gastornis was getting a lot closer than usual. Maybe he saw the hive as well, not that she was going to share with him. The female bent her legs, eyed the hive, and jumped. She leapt almost her body height into the air, and when she got in reach of the beehive, she grabbed a section and ripped it clean off the branch. As soon as her feet hit the ground, she turned and bolted. The angry swarm of bees burst out in all directions, reacting to the attack on their hive. The female Gastornis ran as hard as she could to get as far as she could from the vengeful insects. She got stung a few times, but was mostly unharmed. When she felt she was far enough away, she stopped running and turned to see if any of the bees were still following. What she saw instead was the male Gastornis running in the opposite direction, with the bees in hot pursuit. Evidently, they thought he had stolen from them, and were now chasing him down. The female felt a little bad for him, and then swallowed the chunk of beehive in one go. Delicious. She knew that it would take more than bees to discourage the male Gastornis, and he would likely find her later on. So she set off again. There was a lot of forest to cover, and the breeding season had only just begun. Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we will be breaking down one of the largest birds ever to have lived, Gastornis. Gastornis is a genus of large, flightless birds that lived between 55 and 35 million years ago and lived across the Northern Hemisphere. 
The first remains were found in 1855 in Paris. Since then, remains have been found across Europe, in America, and even in China. There are multiple species. The American species were originally called Diatrima. However, studies found that they were in the same group as the earlier named Gastornis, and so renamed. It is important to note that the genus of Gastornis are not terror birds. These two groups evolved completely separately, with terror birds isolated in South America. Gastornis's closest living relatives are waterfowl, being ducks, geese, and swans. In fact, the first reconstruction of a Gastornis was very swan-like, though now we know that they looked quite different. The largest Gastornis, Giganteus, grew to 2 meters tall and weighed up to 175 kilograms. They stood on long, powerful legs, had short, compact bodies, and tiny, most likely vestigial wings. Their necks were long, but made up of large, thick vertebra, which held up its enormous head. Far larger in comparison to modern large birds, this deep, compressed, robust beak was connected to powerful muscles, giving it an immense, crushing bite force. This was what led scientists to believe that Gastornis was a top predator in its environment, hunting down and crushing small animals with its deadly beak. This theory survived for a long time, but recent studies have mostly proven it incorrect. For one, the lip of the beak is straight, lacking the raptoral hook that many predatory birds, including the terror birds, have. Now, of course, not all predatory birds have this hook, such as storks, but most that feed on terrestrial prey do. Footprints believed to have belonged to Gastornis do not have claws or talons on their feet, at least none that have left the mark. But the most conclusive evidence against Gastornis being carnivorous came from studies done in 2013 and 2014, which looked at the calcium isotopes in the fossils of Gastornis. These tests were compared to modern birds, but also different dinosaur fossils, all of these tests came back showing that Gastornis was a herbivore. So instead of crushing small mammals in its beak, it's likely that Gastornis was instead breaking open hard nuts and seeds, using its immense bind force to break open or cut into sources of food other animals couldn't access, and likely becoming the forest seed dispenser as well, like a modern cassowary. The first fossil feathers attributed to Gastornis were thought to be long and hair-like, similar to modern ratites, but the fossil in question turned out to be a plant fossil. However, another fossil was found that resembled a veined feather and was attributed to Gastornis based on the size of the feather, so they may have had more normal flight feathers, but this could be different in each species, or could change depending on the location of the body. Gastornis likely originated in Europe and spread to other continents using land bridges. However, the genus lasted longest in Europe, with both oldest and youngest fossils being found there. What caused their extinction isn't fully known, with competition from increasingly large mammals often being cited. However, climate change may have been the main factor. Gastornis seem to specialize in areas that have dense rainforests or jungles, and as the Eocene moved on, Earth got cooler and drier, replacing forests with more open environments, a slow change that led to the inevitable disappearance of these massive birds. During their time, they were one of the few species that got to a large size after the extinction of the dinosaurs, and were some of the largest land animals in Europe for millions of years, likely filling the role of herbivore that was too large to be threatened once they reached adulthood. However, given their close relationship to ducks, geese, and swans, who's to say that they weren't just as aggressive? If you've ever been attacked by a duck, goose, or swan, or in my case, all three, you probably know what I'm talking about. But what do you think of Gastornis, the ones that picked up where the dinosaurs left off? What lesser-known extinct creature would you like me to do a breakdown on next? And until then, please like, share, subscribe, and thank you for watching.